Hi guys and welcome to this video on Recurrence Relations, part of the Further Maths course and I am stoked to have you here with me. I'm Darren, otherwise known as a Maths Guru and if you have the opportunity, do me a favour before I kick into this video. Uh, could you do me a favour and subscribe to my YouTube channel? Just click the little doohickey in the corner. Greatly appreciate if you do. Love recording videos, but it's very much just me on my own doing this stuff and your support is greatly appreciated. Now, what on earth is a recurrence relationship? Why do we use such random language in mathematics? Well, actually, you can blame Barry for that. Barry is this guy who I swear sits over here in Australia and makes things really, really complicated. Before we get into it, what's the lesson gonna actually all be all about? We're gonna know what a recurrence relationship is and know how to read said recurrent relationships. Fabulous. Basically, long story short, as a sort of a spoiler, um, it's a way of writing the words to go from a term to term sequence in some sort of a formulae typey thing. Now, if you're going, formulas, no, I hate formulas, they're way too complicated. I know they do. It's all right, these are relatively simple. This is further maths, let's not get too excited about this. Now, in the previous lesson, we did spend some time looking at what a sequence was. Well, we just said it was term to term, it was a list of numbers that basically had some sort of pattern to it. So an example was maybe take the previous term, multiply it by three and then add two. So if I had an initial number, my start number maybe one, multiply it by three and add two would give me five. Then I do the same thing again. I take five, multiply it by three is 15, add two is 17, multiply it by three, add two. Very complicated now and uh, my brain is starting to fry. But at the end of the last lesson, we actually turned around and said, well, we can use calculators to do this. We can use my CAS calculator. So use technology to help where you can. Now, as I say, Barry sort of come to save the day. How has he come to save the day? Well, writing things in terms of English language can get very long and very boring and very repetitive. So if we can make things simpler for us, then life is good. But Barry being Barry gives with one hand and takes away from another. So if we have a look at the language, language, language he uses, here we go. Here's an example. Oh my goodness gracious me. V with a little zero equals five and then Vm plus one equals Vm plus ten. Huh? What is that all about, Barry? Huh? Well, basically it looks confusing, but let's break things down. I've got a sequence of numbers here. Now last lesson we dealt with a, uh, the two times table. Let's ramp it up with our three times table. And what you'll notice here is I've got number three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, and 21. Now, what are the numbers on top? One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Well, like all good Australians and British people and our Americans and all over the world, it's a queue. So the number three is my first number in the queue. Number six is my second number. Then there's my third number, my fourth number, my fifth number. And remember these ellipses means it goes on to infinity and beyond. So we go back to our previous lesson and we, we knew that this was called the start term, didn't we? We yes, or the start number or something along those lines, start something, yes? Well, actually, we can give that a term and we can say, let that be the term V0 equals three. All right, so whenever now you see a V with a little zero, that's effectively saying that's where my sequence is starting. What on earth do you think this value here is? Well, that's V0, we've said that. So what about this value here? Well, this six now is actually V1. And this value here is now V2. And this now number here is V3. And this number here is V4. And this number here is V5. Oh my goodness. So now we have this V0, which is the first number. And then V1, which is the second number. V2 is the third number. Well, there's a bit of a pattern here. We can see that. But what on earth does this Vn plus 1 equals Vn plus, say, 3 business mean? Well, basically, what this tells me is that n plus 1 just means code for your next term. And this Vn means your current term. So if we now have this as your next term, and this one here is your current term, then try reading this in English. It says, take your current term, add 3, and you'll get your next term. Oh my goodness, that's the rule. So I'm going to take my current term, I'm going to add three, and I'm going to get my next term. I'm going to take my current term and add three, I get my next term, and take my current term and add three and get my next term. This stuff is amazing. Now, why do we use this VN subscript business? Well, if I scroll this up for just a little bit, we know that V0 in this case is equal to three. So what it's saying is V1 is equal to V0 plus three. 
So what that's saying is take the zeroth term, take that very first number, add three, and you'll get to your second number. And in the same way then that V2 would equal to V1 plus three, and V3 would equal to V2 plus three, and V4 is equal to V3 plus three. All this is saying is to get from one term to the next term, add it on. Now what do you notice about these little numbers here? Zero went to one, one went to two, two went to three, three went to four. So if I now have the little n here, how do I get to my next term? Well, this is a little bit of algebra, but if I've got three going to four and two going to three and one going to uh, two, then what I'm doing is I'm taking that number and adding one. So there we go, v of n plus one. So what we're saying is whatever our number of term is, the next term is equal to three. Stuff is amazing. And if you can decode this, absolutely freaking awesome. So let's go back to our example that we were given a moment ago. So we now know that our v0 equals five is my first term. Yay! And there is five. Now it says take a term, add 10, and you'll get to the next term. So that's another way of saying just add 10. So 15, 25, 35, 45, 55, 65, and we could go on to infinity and beyond. So the important thing to notice is that one there stands for my current term, and this stands for my next term. And again, don't get confused. If I wanted to find V7, what would I do? Well, hopefully I would take V6 and add 10. I would take that previous term and add 10 to it. Wow! Now, iterations. Barry, once again, is trying to make us a little bit confused. It means how many times we are going to do the formula to get from the first term. So if you do four iterations, that means you're gonna end up with five numbers. Just remember that. All right, here's some examples extracted from the Cambridge Further Mathematics Units 3 and 4 textbook series. Thank you very much, Cambridge, for allowing me to use your examples. I cannot thank you enough. Greatly, greatly appreciated. You guys rock. Example one, write down the first of five terms, I can do that, of the sequence defined by the recurrence relationship. Ah, oh, Barry, you can use that. Ex very, very long words, but we know that it basically means a sequence. All right, so write down the first five terms. There's my first five little lines. And now, what does it say? V naught equals nine. I know what that means. Thank you very much. My first term it is, in fact, nine. And then I've got Vn plus one is equal to Vn minus four. Take my current term and then take away four from it and I'll get my next one. I can do that. That gives me five. Take away four gives me one. Oh, negative numbers. Take away three. Uh, sorry, take away four gives me negative three. And take away four gives me negative seven. And Barry, I'm afraid you have not beaten me this time. So there we go. See what that does? See example number two. A sequence is generated by the recurrence relation V naught equals 300. We know what that means now. Thank you very much. My first term is 300. And to get my next term, Vn plus one is equal to 0 0.5 Vn minus nine. Oh, hold on a moment. Ramping up the complexity just a little bit. Not really. This means take my current term, multiply it by a half, and then subtract nine to get to my next term. Use your calculator. Oh, I can do this. Bring up my calculator, he says, which is now blocking my formula, but it's okay because I've got it on the top of the screen, to generate the sequence and determine how many terms of the sequence are positive. Right, okay. So what that's basically saying is keep doing this, keep iterating it, oh, big word, until I get to a negative number and effectively count how many times I do it. Right, so do you remember how we do this? You put your V0 in and press equals, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, take my answer, multiply it by 0.5. Notice how ANS already came up first. If I wanted to, I could bring up my keyboard and you notice the red arrow now pointing to the ANS button. I could have done that, but I want to take my previous term, multiply it by 0.5 and subtract 9, not 99, 9. So there we go. How many terms of the sequence are positive? So 300 is my first term. There is my second term. Third fourth, fifth, there you go. Five of my terms will be positive because that minus eight is done. And literally I would write down five of my terms are positive. 
This has been another Mass Guru production. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already done so, in a moment you'll be given the opportunity to subscribe. Greatly appreciated if you could. And below that is a video loading for you to watch on the Further Mass series. Always good to see you. If you can send a shout out to your friends, let people know that I'm here because I am one person in a room talking to myself, going ever so slightly mad in degrees. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you next time. Have an awesome day. Mass Guru, signing out.